All right, so Doug Pedro Radio, Preacher's Rants. Here we go. Are you ready? It's a new edition. Am I going to be ashamed? Well, probably. You know I'm a big but, swearer. But, but not because of, oh, okay, well, see, see, here's, here's the direction I'm not going. I'm not going in taking the Lord's name in vain um, as, as someone um, suggesting that, uh, as, as someone cursing, or okay. as you would say it. Cursing, yeah, c- I cursing. Like cussing. Swearing. My cussing. kids say cussing. I cussing, hate that word. <laughs> as you'd say it. Um, I think the whole notion of taking the Lord's name in vain is not that someone says, oh, God. Right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not it at right. all. It's when you use the name, the power, the majesty, the life, the activity of God, your God, the God, or however you want to do that, f- to give credit to something or blame to something that God has nothing to do with. Yuck, I hate that. Right? So, in Exodus, as a good preacher would tell you, in Exodus 20, in the verse number (laughs) 7, do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who says such a thing, says one translation of the Bible. Another puts it this way, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for your Lord will will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Or the old schoolers, King James like the way this reads, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord they God in vain. So anytime you attribute something to God that is not of him, but then becomes a question of what is attributable to God well, and what is it? People disagree about that. And and we would have we'd have a bunch of trouble. But here's how you can tell when you're being dishonest liar about it, you know that you're not, then you're attributing it to God. Here's the example. Okay. Someone was uh, mentioned to me the other day that they were in a meeting and people at a, at a, re- at a religious uh, a company and they were all talking about how they started working there. Mm-hmm. And people would say things like, oh, it was just totally a God thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, God just made it happen. Mm-hmm. That is taking the Lord's name in vain. Mm-hmm. No, God didn't just make it happen. Mm-hmm. It, it's a dishonest response to say it just happened as mm-hmm. if out of... The creation of God, as if you God, had nothing like, to do with it, like the Book of Genesis, mm-hmm. just built. No, you sent an you sent an application in. You had mm-hmm. an education. Mm-hmm. You met with someone. You asked for the job. You lobbied for the job. Mm-hmm. You you sent references, letters to other people. You did all of this stuff, and then to step back and simply say, "Oh, it was just a God thing," mm-hmm. and bathing one's own activity inside of. God did it language so that you can maintain this level of false humility is probably the ultimate expression of it. So I, I was talking to this, this person who told mm-hmm. me this story. She was in a, she, she wanted, she had applied for one of these jobs that somebody else had and she didn't get it. Mm-hmm. So she's in the meeting. They don't know that she ever was one of the applicants for mm-hmm. the job. Mm-hmm. So it comes around to this person who has the job that she wanted and the, and the, the, the person who now has the job said, oh, you know, it was just a God thing. And, you know, God just mm-hmm. provided, like no details about it at all. Mm-hmm. Right. No details about how it came about. No details about her connections to the people at the school. Mm-hmm. None of that stuff. Just sort of, her talents oh, the Lord just provided for mm-hmm. us. And my husband and I, we really prayed. And, we, mm-hmm. and this person sitting there thinking, yeah, yeah I, does that mean I wanted that job and mm-hmm. I, you know I, I had to interview for it like did you not have to interview for it and yeah <laughs> so they finished and this it came around to this this person and she was sitting there thinking like what should I say yeah and I wanted her to say you know that's that's just a it's, it's a form of lying it's a form mm-hmm. of just of of just deceiving yourself and being dishonest mm-hmm. right about mm-hmm. how you got this job and then being able to cast it in somehow that god cared for it. you in a way that, that allowed this to happen people. when there's somebody else sitting right there that's mm-hmm. like no it's not it mm-hmm. don't don't make don't put god on the hook for the decisions made by the by the HR committee mm-hmm. or by the, 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 the person that you work for mm-hmm. or by the fact that you your husband is friends with the guy that you work <laughs> for. Like, it's so dishonest, right? Like, right. So I think that at its root is this, it, it exists in this Christian, in, in the Christian culture, this way of wanting to honor God so that our lives won't seem so disconnected to God by giving credit to God for things that God mm-hmm. had nothing particularly mm-hmm. to do with. Now, granted that 
in, in an integrated way of thinking about the world like I do and a bunch of other people do, that mm-hmm. there's no shadow that moves that God's not engaged with because God is in all things. Right. But that is not the same thing as there's no shadow that moves that doesn't move by the hand of God. Well, some people think life really is a big chess game. They do, and they're taking the Lord's name in vain by saying that stuff. Like yeah. like that kind of thing, to my mind, out of Exodus uh, 20, verse mm-hmm. number 7, mm-hmm. that kind of passage should put an end to that whole deterministic way of thinking about the world. If you could somehow misattribute to God or take the Lord's name lightly or to misconstrue the activity. You can't then hold a view that says, oh, everything that happens happens because God did it. If that were the case, there would be no way to misuse the name of God. Mm -hmm. You couldn't misuse the name of God because God did everything by God's intention. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't, you wouldn't have a command that would remind someone that, um, that, that you should be careful about how you use the name of God so if you how, can attribute everything how to God. Would you These people need to stop. They need to, a little honesty in oh, well, Christianity would go a long I way. I think so, too. Just like I hate it when, if you compliment someone and they'll be like, oh, it was God. It was God. Yes. And I'm oh. like, oh, it drives me crazy. It really drives me crazy. It's like just accept the stupid compliment. Yeah, I was going to swear that, there, but I didn't th- That it. you had something <laughs> to do with it. Yeah. I mean, accept that there was work, there was effort, and it was effective and that I appreciate, accept my appreciation. That's part of it. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, please let me give you this appreciation for what you, you did. I recognize that there's God working in and among in the midst. But it, the stakes become much higher when mm-hmm. people have suffered yeah, even and horribly. It's be- and it's not that you've over attributed to God. You've under attributed to yourself. Yes. And then by implication have said that God's responsible for everything yeah. else. And that is, I just find it to be fundamentally dishonest. And then people dishonest. who have, you know, even had worse things happen, yes. but, you know, feel like, why didn't God step in for me there? And how uh, is it that we should try to... And I'm not un- just, uh, let, me, let me pause for yeah. a second. I'm not just going after the very bad deterministic theology of Calvinism, which uh-huh. I, I would without without end. Yes. I, I, would, I would do that. Um, Wait, I, I, w- I would do the ultra marathon of, <laughs> of banging on that theory That'd because be I fun. find let's it to be that sometime. <laughs> despicable. But many people who don't hold that bizarre radical view that still every shadow that moves stuff. still give credit oh, yeah. to God for things because they want to be honoring of God. And what they often we often don't realize is that the, it's, it's so doing dishonoring. the opposite of honoring of God because you're and it's dishonoring ourselves. Yes, it's dishonoring yourself, and then and and it's. Um, and I, I think we all need stop. to take a responsibility for the kinds of lies that we tell ourselves. Kind of, yes. At least, or, tell d- or other dishonesty, people. at least. Yep. I mean, it's hard. I have a hard time with this because some, I think some forms of dishonesty are maybe a little bit okay. I don't think it's okay to, like, I'm a very, very emotive person. And I don't think it's really okay to mm. go around spewing all my emotions all the time. Mm-hmm. I think it's okay mm. to maybe protect mm-hmm, they have a little mm-hmm. bit of a buffer mm-hmm. well am i lying then i mean if a good good friend asks oh, me sure. how i am and i'm not feeling okay i mean your wife has done this sometimes when she asks me and i just say oh i'm okay and she looks at me and she says really victoria yeah <laughs> kind of like are you do you think i'm gonna buy that but that's different that's not what i'm talking about sure. i'm talking yeah. about you well, know isn't isn't the difference between lying and truth telling uh, partially giving to someone the information that they rightly, that, that they have a right to. Okay. Right? So it's a relational, it's a relational dynamic. Yeah. Truth and lies are about relationships. Mm-hmm. So if you give to someone wrong information that they deserved the right information. That's bad. That's deception. Right. If you don't give to someone information that they don't have a right to, mm-hmm. you're not withholding anything that's deserved. Right. So I think that's the difference, right? So when someone says, how are you? And it's really a greeting, Mm -hmm. not really an inquiry. Yeah. That's one thing. If your doctor says to you, how are you? And you know that they're asking about a particular thing. You're like, oh, you know, I'm fine. It's it's fine. Then then you're holding back that which the relationship expect, the relationship on both sides would expect. I like that idea of what there's a right to or the, I mean, you don't always go into your relationship saying, here's what I expect or here's what I don't expect. No, it's it's more dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, this is our our connection. This is my and and relationships are complicated too because there's other relationships. So sometimes what 
we might want to mm. say to somebody could hurt somebody else right. or, you know, in community. And so thereby it's better to withhold some of that. Yeah, information. because it's not it's not there. There's no relational requirement that they should have your opinion. Right. Yeah. Like marriage, I think, puts a relationship mm -hmm. on a different kind mm -hmm. of level than a lot of relationships where there are certain expectations. And that's where maybe the word like lying or, s or some truth telling is, but honesty and dishonesty might be a little better. Yeah, I think right? this is better pairing mm -hmm. than lying. All right, so we're going to talk to our love and salt friends. That's the end of the yes. sermon, by the way. Pass the plate. Um, okay. And if you want to make a contribution to the <laughs> the virtual uh, the, the preachers plate. the preachers life, go to love Doug to Pageant do that. Go Radio. Radio. Donate here. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to give a jingle to uh, to our friends, Amy Andrews and Jessica Griffith, and their book, Love and Salt. And uh, if all things come together, we're going to have a little chat with them here in a minute. So stick with us here. Doug Padger Radio, if you're watching on the videos, roll the next one. If you're listening on Spreaker, roll the next one. Talk to you in a second.